So today we are going to the river to do some wildlife photography. Um, and this time it's really to test a firmware update for m both my lens and my camera. That doesn't really concern you guys. For coffee, I did bring some Ethiopia Kambada, but today we're doing something pretty cool with it. Let's get out there and I'll show you. two swans swimming towards us down river now um, and I have seen some golden eye I think um, I have seen some golden eye skimming down the river uh, I'm gonna keep my eye out for the eagles and maybe you can hear the swans honking behind me let's get the camera out shout out to my buddy Corey he was browsing for whatever reason the web page for the Sigma 150 to 600 and discovered that there was a firmware update ready for it that was only applicable when used on the A7 IV, the Sony A7 IV, which is what I typically use to shoot my videos with, but when I'm out with wildlife, this is the better camera to do it with. Now, I promise we will get to the coffee in a little bit. But while the swans are getting close, I want to get some photos because otherwise there's not much close to me. It's pretty quiet out here. I don't even see the eagles. All right, let's get these honkers. <laughs> So I'm going to go down to the end of the dock and wait for him. Well, they're far enough down river that I'm not going to get any better shots now. They gave me about five good minutes of shooting with them. If I got anything, here's a picture or two that I really like. Um, as I was walking up, I saw a couple of different types of ducks flying by, but I see nothing very close to me at the moment. Perhaps we should get to the coffee. All right. I do have something cool to show you guys. I got it um, for Christmas. Now, I did ask for this, so I knew it was coming, but I kind of forgot about it. Um, and it was kind of a joke anyway. I wasn't even sure that this product was going to be worthwhile. I wasn't sure about anything about the brand of this product. And let me tell you something. I have learned some things. Um, let's break it open and I'll tell you about it. So this guy here is the Wakako. I think I'm saying that right. Wakako Mini Presso GR. This thing is a little espresso maker. It has created for me the f maybe f half a dozen times I've used it now, some just incredible espresso shots. Um, really nice crema, uh, great flavor, um, consistent too. Like every single time has been good, not too sour. Um, and that's often one of my issues with espresso is sour shots. I have a Cheap DeLonghi Stelosa at home, I think is the name. Electric espresso machine. And, you know, it's fine. It actually makes me some good drinks every now and then. But often I'm pulling 
inconsistent shots. It was awesome to learn on, um, and I've been using it for a full year now, and I really have felt the need to try and branch out a little bit with espresso. And this channel really has not covered espresso one bit. <clears throat> so I want to start, but I'm a total amateur when it comes to espresso, like just learning. Uh, the other day I got to play with a Flare Pro 2, and I might have that back again to do some video stuff with it. So maybe I'll get to show you some stuff about another manual espresso maker that was a lot of fun to use, although um, definitely more tricky and complex. But once you set it up and do it a couple of times, it wasn't too bad. This guy though, this, this is like 50 or $60. Let me tell you, the value in this is insane. But it's got its drawbacks. Let's disassemble it and we'll talk some more. Whoa, okay. So, here is the top end where the water, you put your water in, your hot water. Here is your drinking cup. This is what the espresso actually pours into. And here's the piston. And this is what creates your pressure. Um, obviously you're pouring boiling water into here so it's got heat. This is what has to create pressure. And so when everything is sealed, it's able to create what it says is eight bars of pressure, which um, if that's true, uh, should be consistent enough to make a nice proper espresso. And from my five or six shots that I've pulled so far, I kind of believe it. It may not, it, it doesn't feel like eight bars, like eight bars felt on the Flare Pro 2. Getting that to eight bars felt like a lot more force than what this is. And when everything's together, um, it's a little bit more forceful. But you just press this like, I don't know, a dozen times and you've got your espresso. It's pretty incredible. Let's get it set up. So it comes with a coffee scoop as well. And I normally dislike coffee scoops, you guys know that. But this one doubles as a tamper. Here's the brew head uh, and the basket is in there. It kind of can pop out. I'm in need of some coffee, let's make some. So I brought whole bean today because I really wanted to be uncomfortable for a long amount of time. Just kidding. I brought 16 grams of Ethiopia Kambada. This is stuff I've been pulling shots off uh, lately. On the Flare, I was getting some sour shots, but they tasted pretty good. On my DeLonghi, I'm getting decent stuff. And on this, um, I think I pulled one shot and it was really good. Like just amazing. So we're gonna try it again. Now one of the drawbacks to this thing is its size actually. It's portable and that's one of its pros at the same time, but its size is a limitation in that you can only input about eight grams of ground coffee. Usually I try to aim for eight in, 20 out, somewhere in that range. So I brought the scale and of course I brought the Hario hand grinder. Now this is espresso. I did watch the James Hoffman video on the Nanopresso, I think is what he did, and he mentioned that at espresso grind size, like really fine, it chokes a little bit. I took his notes down and I used the AeroPress grind that I normally use on my Ode, which is a one. I go all the way down on the Ode and that is great for AeroPress and seemed to give me consistently great shots on the Mini Presso GR here. Let's see. Yeah, it looks good to me. So we're gonna load it up. All right. So we're looking for eight grams of beans. And I guess a pro is that with only eight grams, you don't have a whole lot of grinding to do. So let's get to that. If it wasn't obvious, it is uh, winter here in Northern Michigan. Now normally, like right now in January, we'd be about shin deep, if not knee deep in snow. Uh, but last night it was, over freezing, about 35, 36 degrees, and it rained. So we don't have a whole lot of snow. Um, it's a very strange occasion for January here. Uh, and even right now, it, it, if it's 34, it doesn't feel too bad. Um, there's very little wind, maybe like five mile an hour winds. Just a little bit of a breeze. 
it's fairly comfortable. My my fingers are a little numb here, but my Valorette gloves, shout out Valorette, you guys make the best gloves. Um, keep the rest of my hand warm anyway. Okay, done with that. Now, the other thorn in this whole idea that I wholeheartedly recognize and James talked about this too, is um, why espresso outdoors? Is this an enjoyable experience preferred over pour over, preferred over AeroPress outdoors? I don't know. This is my first time doing it outdoors. I guess I'll make that decision for myself. And I, I do remember that uh, in the start of his video, he was doing this outside to kind of gauge that for himself as well. And I think it left him with some questions about who would do this uh, over some other way. And we'll find out, I guess. I don't know. Let's get our uh, water going. We need hot water here. Gas on. Flames on and the first click. Normally it's a little more resistant to wind, but I think my fuel is low. So I hope we can heat our water up enough. I should put the top on. All right, while that's going, we should get our grounds in our basket here. Now, the only part of this that is, I think, the most finicky is uh, getting your grounds into the tamper or into the basket. Um, I bring along my AeroPress funnel, and I can't tell you how much I've used this AeroPress funnel for. I use it for roasting, I use it for so much. This AeroPress funnel fits on the basket of the Mini Presso GR, like, perfectly. It's got just enough give that it can grab the basket, or at least seal it just well enough that you can get your coffee in there without an issue. If you just kind of hold it like that, coffee in, we're good, there we go, there's our coffee, uh, before the wind picks up we got to get this thing hooked up. Alright, so basket goes down like this, there's a little notch to set it down, and use your scoop as a tamper. Okay, that's tamped. It looks a little finer than what I'm normally doing with my ode, but that's okay. We'll give it a shot. Water's almost ready. All right, so that's ready. We're gonna put this back here, and as it's in the upright position, you're gonna notice this hole here. That's actually where the coffee comes out. So, what that means is, when you pour the water in here, you put this on top, screw it in, make sure it's tight, and then you flip everything so that it's actually upside down, and then you brew like that. Okay. Water going in. So that's about, actually about 65 grams of water to that line. You don't, you, you only use about half of it. So before it cools down, let's get this tightened on, sealed up good. Then we're gonna get our cup on. Tear the scale, unlock the piston. It's gonna build pressure after the first five or six times and then you'll see it start to go. Three, four, five, six, seven. You feel it building, eight, nine. And that's pretty, Pretty good amount of pressure. I think my grind was too fine. My grind size. Yeah. So pressure is really high. We're getting drops out. Now this is what I get for not practicing with the hand grinder beforehand. We're learning together here. Make sure you get that grind size right because then you're gonna struggle just like I am with your output. Pressure's high and it doesn't want to give way to any flow. 
Now, like I said, on my Ode, I had I have it tuned in for AeroPress, and that's what I always do. You saw me adjust it, and apparently I didn't get it quite right. I've got like six grams in here, so we're not even in the right ballpark yet. Now, of course, I talked this thing up about how great the espresso is, and when I go and change my grinder and mess one thing up, ruins the whole experience, the, the entire experience, right? Especially, could you imagine if I didn't bring more than enough of my beans? I'd, I'd have no coffee because I ground a little too fine. I ground espresso level and that's a little too fine. The pressure is too great and there is no flow. I've got 10 grams in there. So we're talking about a nearly one to one ratio Obviously, there's no flow. Um, clearly, it's too fine. We're gonna back this off and try again. I'm gonna loosen up my grinder a couple of clicks and see what we can produce. Although, I'm not keen on wasting coffee. Here's about a one to one ratio. It got cold real, real fast. <laughs> but, oddly enough, the taste is good. It is bitter, but you get the blueberry. It's so potent. It's still like wonderful, even though this is terribly screwed up. Um, it's still an enjoyable espresso. But it did get cold because I've been doing this for five minutes now. So let's try this again. Need to clean this out still. This is another gripe. It is too small to knock like a normal portafilter. Um, so you, I often f at home, I was finding myself grabbing like a spoon or a small, like a butter knife, prying out the puck, and then kind of cleaning the rest out with my fingers in the sink. It, it's too, it's it's small and kind of a weird nitpicky thing. Um, another con to its size and portability. Keep that in mind and coarsen this up a little bit. I brought just enough to do this twice. Can't screw it up again. That looks a little better. Still smells great. Get that funnel back out. Just hold it down, coffee in. Now, to my eye, this looks um, a little coarser than I would do AeroPress. So I, maybe I went one click too far. Nice and tight. And be quick, quick, quick. Unlock the piston. Cup. Flip. Start pressing. Turn your timer on. And here we go. Quick release. We're at 10 grams, 16, we'll aim for 20. There's 21, 21 grams in about 23 seconds um, for a short single shot. That's not too bad. Let's get up close and I'll show you. I mean, it just looks pretty wonderful to me. We're gonna give this a try before it gets too cold here. Uh, okay. Still warm, because we didn't spend five minutes making it. Now it's on the, a little on the sour side, a little, a little on the weak side. So maybe I should have stopped it more at, you know, 16 or 18, 21, it's, it's still good. And I think I should have ground it just a little bit finer. One click finer, so somewhere in between those two that I did. It coming out at about 22, 25 seconds was probably a little too fast, and it seems a little under extracted. Yeah, it's a little sour, and a little lacking of the blueberry flavor that was in the one to one shot that I severely messed up and was coming out in drips. Um, that actually tasted better than this does. And it's because we've under extracted this by lengthening uh, the ratio a little bit by making it too coarse. And it's 
it's very possible that by the time I unlocked the piston and started pushing that the air temperature had cooled down that water just a little bit and we're not extracting at a great temperature. Those are all factors to keep in mind. However, I got a shot. It doesn't taste bad. It's cooling down quickly. So that brings me back to the question, why would anybody do this? Would I do this? And I think it's cool. Now, let's see. Um, I have a little bit left. I'm just gonna do this for show. I'm gonna push a little more through. Now this, is, this would taste pretty weak, but just for show, I wanna show you that you can also make somewhat of an Americano. I've got uh, about probably 12 grams, 14 grams in here left. This should still be hot water, about 26 grams. So Americano is one to one uh, espresso to hot water. Adding freshly hot water back into the equation, let's mix it up just a little bit. Now this I would sit here and do. This is tasty. It's not as strong as I would like because we did use the second, kind of like second leftover water to continue pushing through the grinds. I wouldn't recommend that. But if you just made a great shot with an Americano after to heat it back up because it takes a little time, the air temperature is going to cool it. Hot water still being in there, heating this drink back up. Makes for kind of a nice experience. When everything is running right and I can do this and make an Americano to sip on a little longer, I don't see why I wouldn't do this. Learn from this from me. Test it out in your kitchen before you take it out in the field, unless you're the type to really have fun with this kind of adventure and enjoy the mess ups and learn from them. I'm kind of in that space right now and I'm really having a good time with it. I hope you guys learned something. I'm gonna spend maybe another hour here taking some more pictures of anything that comes by, testing my firmware updates. Things seem to be good while I was working with the swans. Uh, I noticed that my tracking points were a little more active um, and I noticed that it was sticking to the swans' eyes a little bit more often. That is good. Leave a note in the comments below. Do you care about the photo video stuff? Is this something you come to my channel for to see this kind of mixture of these two passions that I have, photography and coffee? Um, I know other channels do photography stuff and there's plenty of coffee channels out there, but I feel like I've got myself a little carved out niche of photographer who does coffee stuff often. Thank you for coming along. Hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more of this and I will see you in the next one. Oh, and if I've got any photographs to show, they'd probably pop up like here or here or above me here or just right in front of my face because why would you want to continue looking at my face anymore? Maybe I got pictures of the bald eagles that would certainly come really close to me and give me ample opportunity to get world-class photos. Or maybe it's a seagull. I don't know. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.